it going guys? I hope you're all doing well out there wherever you are in the world. And in today's video, I feel like we're going from very old to very new. If you haven't seen already, I did a recent video on the earliest boss multi effects, which I'll leave a link to up here. And today we're jumping straight into the Helix. So I've been uh, using the Helix quite a lot recently when they released the 3.0 firmware. Um, I've been really into it and experimenting with various things. And I've been extensively through the list of amps to find the ones that I like, so I'm not always hitting in, in the dark. And I found five that I would call my favorites, and I thought you might be interested to check them out. So I've made five presets with these amps to show you. Uh, there's a couple of effects and things as well, but we'll go through and I'll show you and edit them as we go. The one thing to note is that I'm not a big fan of the Line 6 stock cabs. It's not that they're not good, but it takes me a while to find the sound that I want, whereas with IRs, I just load it up and it's right there. So your mileage may vary. The IRs that I'm using today are from the Red Wires free pack and I'll leave a link to it down in the description. So if you dig it, you can get involved. I'm really curious about what your favorite Helix amp models are. If there's any I've missed that I should give a bit more time to, please let me know in the comments down below what your favorites are. And just quickly, if you haven't already, you'd be doing me a massive favor if you like what I do. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. It all helps push the channel forward and keeps me making videos like this. So the first amp on my list is the Line 6 Litigator, and this is based on that Dumble sort of vibe, supposedly. Uh, it's what you heard in the intro there. It's a really dynamic sounding amp, uh, and it sounds really good in that kind of breakup state where if you play hard, it breaks up. If you play softly, it goes clean. So this is how I've got it dialed up. I think it sounds best with the drive all the way up. It's a relatively bright sounding amp, so I've got the treble and presence backed off a little bit, and it's just got a bit of uh, delay and reverb. Sounds like this. <laughs> Really dynamic, really cool. If I take the uh, delay and verb off, it sounds like this. Delay and reverb make everything better. I'm just gonna put the reverb back on for now. And it's capable of a variety of tones, but to me it sounds better like that if you back the gain off. It just doesn't become quite as responsive. You can get it to do a cleanish kind of sound. And it sounds quite good if you stack, if you go clean and stack a compressor in front of it, it sort of gets in that John Mayer ballpark. And while that sounds very good, that doesn't actually hit the kind of gain levels that I'd use it for. Um, if I was doing any lead work. So before it, I've actually stacked the Dyna drive, which is the, is it Dyna? Diana, Diana? Diana drive. Um, it's the uh, Zen drive kind of clone uh, in the Helix with the game backed off and it just pushes the front end of the amp. <laughs> So if you're going for that more Robin Ford type thing. It can do that being pushed. It's just a really flexible little amp model that. Uh, so that's the first one on my list. Next up is the Placator Dirty and this is based on the Friedman BE100 modded Marshall territory. And this is what it sounds like with my preferred settings and a bit of reverb. <laughs> This amp has tons of gain on tap, but it also has these switches here, which is very interesting. So the HBE is the hairy brown eye switch, which is on the main free, the real Friedman head, adds some gain and saturation. <laughs> I like that more than I remember liking it actually, that's pretty cool. 
Uh, next, you've got a, a fat switch, which is like a pre EQ, I think, just boosts the uh, the like lower mid. <laughs> Slightly more subtle that one, but I think that'd be useful if you were using single coils and stuff. The C45 uh, is uh, a capacitor in the amp that uh, change. I think it changes the value of it. Uh, I I like it on. This is off. Just gives a little bit more bite in the right places for me. I like that. And then saturation is. Uh, as it says, a lot more saturation. Uh, this one gets a bit out of control for me, but I can see how it would be useful for some. Then obviously you can combine those in any combination you like and along with the EQ it makes it really flexible. I mean you can just turn them all on if you want. Let's do that. It's going to be a hideous amount of gain but it's all in the name of science. <laughs> Next on my list is the Mail Order Twin, and this is based on an old silver tone, and this is my favorite clean amp on there after going through them all. And a word of warning, when I say clean, I mean slightly breaking up. I don't like crystal clean amps. This has got a really pleasing breakup, and it's a bit more mid-forward than some of the Fender models on there. And it sounds like this. <laughs> And then I've actually got dialed up some uh, drive pedals before it. There's a little bit of reverb on there as well. Uh, and I've got, first of all, the Hedgehog D9, which is the Maxon SD9. And this works a treat in front of this amp. So amp standard. <laughs> Uh, the settings on the Hedgehog might look a bit weird to you, but I've got a SD9 on loan at the moment, and you need to keep that tone low and the gain low into a break broken up amp sounds really cool. I've also got dialed up a, a fuzz pedal, uh, the Ampeg Scrambler, which worked quite cool in front of it. Uh, so it's not like a super fuzzy fuzz pedal, but it gives that kind of broken amp sound. And I can actually stack both of them for a, uh, you know, a bit more, bit more mayhem. <laughs> quite an enjoyable sound and also stacking a compressor in front of it gives you a bit more uh, clean spank. <laughs> Mm. 
Next on my list is the Das Benzin Mega, which is the diesel VH4 Mega channel, which I think is channel three. Uh, and I've just got a little patch set up here with uh, a noise gate in front of it, the uh, the head and then an IR. And I really like this for the heavier stuff. It's It's got a really thick mid range. <laughs> I really like that for the heavier stuff and it's quite a flexible amp actually it's got a nice gain range on it taking it down a bit <laughs> And then even more. Really thick and chewy, and the EQ is really flexible as well. You can go pretty scoopy if you want. If that's your thing, um, I'm more of a fan of uh, plenty of mid-range. A particular feature I really like on this amp is that it has a deep control. So on amps, the, the deep or depth control comes, it's resonance as well, comes in the power amp. So you can use those pre-EQs, the bass, middle and treble in the normal tone stack position, but then the deep adds a real thump in the low end. So I'll demonstrate that now. Go for a bit less gain. You can hear there it's messing with the IR, but that is adding a lot of low end thump and then taking it all the way down. So that's my sort of go-to riffing amp at the moment. And it actually sounds really good blended with other amps. And I, I hopefully do a video on blending amps and IRs and things. If you're interested, let me know in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as possible. But really good amp. If you haven't checked it out now, it's on the 3.0 update. I highly recommend it. The last one on my list is the Cali 4 lead. So this is based on a Mesa Mark IV. And I think this one is a little bit overlooked when it comes with the stock settings, it's really not to my taste at all. But if you know how the old Mark series worked, the EQ, the bass middle treble EQ is actually after the first gain stage in the amp. So kind of pre overdrive. So that's more of a shaper. And then the EQ is more your actual tonality, if that makes any sense. Um, so for my taste, the bass needs to be right down and then you boost the bass up in the graphic EQ section on the amp. So my, my settings sound like this. So like I said, the bass is right down. When you start adding bass, it gets really woolly and horrible. I shouldn't say horrible, that might be your thing, but for my taste, it loses all tightness. So it's a really flexible amp if you know how to dial it in. Like I said, it takes a, a little bit of getting used to, but I really like it and you can get some really tight sounds out of it. And if you want it even tighter than that, obviously you can add like a tube screamer or the new uh, precision drive in there. Um, but the same can be said with the treble and the mid range. You can really hone in how that gain sounds in the preamp. <laughs> Thank you.
And because of its position in the signal path of the original amp and presumably this model as well, the EQ actually affects the gain as well, how much gain uh, you're getting out of it. So if I boost the mids and the treble up, you'll get a lot more saturation. <laughs> And having the pre-bass uh, control really helps keep things tight. So setting it back now, you've got a great gain range between, again, takes some getting used to, but you've got two different gain stages, the lead, lead gain and lead drive, and the combinations of these really change the sound. <laughs> This makes a really good thick lead amp as well because for lead stuff you can add in a bit of bass on the uh, preamp and add a little bit of delay and it gets really nice. It's still articulate but quite, uh, quite ballsy for lack of a better word. <laughs> John Petrucci was a big user of the Mark IV and obviously now has his own SIG uh, Messer. But yeah, like I said, I think that's just a slightly overlooked amp. Um, definitely check it out for yourself and potentially read the manual of the original Mark IV to get to grips with how the EQ reacts and interacts. So that is my current five favorite amps in the Helix range. I mean, I say current because I'm sure it will change, but yeah, I really like those uh, five amps and between them, I can get pretty much any sound I need for recording. Please let me know in the comments below what your favorite Helix amp models are. And if there is any particular videos of subjects you want covered in the Helix range, let me know and I will do my best to oblige. Have a fantastic week, guys. If you haven't already, please look at subscribing to the channel, like, leave a comment. It all helps push the channel forward. And I'll see you in another video soon. Cheers.